folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome aboard Between the Rolls, uh, Murder Hobo Inc.'s talk show. Thanks for joining us. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're a first-time viewer, uh, you picked a good night. Good night to do this. Uh, we may be having a uh, fourth person join us yet. Maybe a little late. We aren't sure. Uh, but uh, first-time viewers, normally we have four panelists on here. Uh, tonight, we are going to go ahead and do our recaps and then talk about taxation and how it fits in your <laughs> RPG, RPG schemes. So uh, first, let's get the formalities out of the way. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube account. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy cool stuff like shirts or phone cases or duvet covers or sweatshirts or uh, bath mats, check out our short or store we've got or 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 orphanage yeah. check out our brothel. orphanage uh <laughs> we've got a, a lot of different stuff. that I was an episode you, yeah i think you can get a skateboard on there i'm not real sure it's but anyway. that's my yeah. goal it's that's a deck goal. it's yeah it's the deck for a skateboard you oh you can get a, you can get a full one so, you can? Yeah. I thought it was only the deck. No, you can get the deck, the trucks, and the wheels. Anyway, wow. there you go. So, you know, do that. Uh, most importantly, if you want to join us on a Tuesday night talk show, or you want to join us on a one shot like this Saturday, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. We will get you on the show. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, we aren't rolling dice, so I don't have my dice with me. Uh, Pirate I do. Dog Dice, yeah, go ahead and show them. If you I always have my dice, dice because I uh, always come out with There we go. Let's make it. There, there we go. Pirate Dog Dice uh, on Twitter. Uh, and if your game snakes, Ooh. try a little adventure oh, sense. Focus on me. Ooh. Uh, Adventure Sense will make your game stink less. It won't make it great unless it's already there, but it'll help. It'll uh, make the room stink less, not your game stink less. That will still stink just as much if it's, you know, like Frank running it. Unless it's Kyle's uh, kitchen <laughs> table. Ooh, putrid sewers. Uh, that's by oddfishgames.com. Oddfishgames.com, also the maker of the shine system. So if you want to learn to write, Check out oddfishgames.com. Okay, let's introduce you to our panel as it is tonight. We will start with Carol. Carol, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is, as you said, my name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, <coughs> casual GM, and a commission bitty painter. Uh, and let's see, where can I be seen? I can be seen here on Between the Rules. I can be seen on our Thursday Night Cred campaign, which I freaking am having a blast with. Uh, the Saturday one shots and hey, you know, I guess I could could mention that I also I'm doing a Starfinder podcast called Hex Grid Heroes. So you had to and mention that other game. Huh? Darn right. Well, yeah, but it's also another podcast I'm doing. I'm cheating on these guys, but it doesn't interfere. And if she looks familiar, you've probably been visiting the post office. Uh, next up <laughs> is David. I'm David not Karen. Oh, man. Hi, I'm David. Uh, you can find me here on most Tuesdays. Also, I am part of the every other Thursday regular show, Cacophony. Then, following Saturday, I'm on the Calamity campaign. The greatest campaign ever. On Twitter. No, no, no. Cred, cred. Well, let's, let's vote. How many people think Calamity is the best? Oh, there you go. Two to one. <laughs> I raised my hands, actually. Just a <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, hey, I we'll take around. your vote. <laughs> I think they're, they're both they're both good. They're uh, both great. But, they're both great. But we have more people watching. Uh, we're old guys. We don't give a shit if you want. <laughs> we don't care about that. Hey, you know what? A lot of people watch us after... Most people watch us after the episode is aired, so we must have a lot of Australians and people are sleeping. Uh, actually, we uh, we do have a fairly decent uh, European and Australian uh, viewership. So hello to everybody Thanks. across the ocean. <coughs> You're big uh, in Japan. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think Japan's bought any adventures. We need to. I really don't. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, the old guy campaign is on every other Saturday. It is calamity. Uh, if you want some laughs, uh, try that. If mm -hmm. you want some serious horror, try the Thursday one. If you don't care about either, 
Ah, try our one shots. Uh, we yep. don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, what we normally do and what we'll be doing tonight on the talk show is first we'll recap all the games from last week uh, before delving into our main topic, taxation. So we're going to start off with Carol, as she's already mentioned. Uh, she is in the CRED campaign and hers Fred. was episode 226. Carol, give us the lowdown. Okay, so this is going to be a short recap. <laughs> Because honestly, she doesn't remember because no, that shit stinks. She doesn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. Honestly, um, it, 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 I can recap it this simply: uh, we got into a fight and realized it was all a dream. That's the simple uh, way to put it. But uh, basically, we were all back on the ship just after having run, been run, or not run out of town escaped from that town because i'm pretty sure they wanted to sacrifice us to dagon or whatever some nefarious thing <laughs> and they weren't happy that we left and they more said well if you leave you're just all, you're dead they pretty much said we would be dead no matter what we did but we decided to take our chances on the ocean <laughs> so we were sleeping and we wake up to find the crew is completely gone um Let's see. The, let's see. Went up. There was a mist, and it was and a huge, huge, huge moon, and the sea was perfectly still. And then, all of a sudden, we uh, we were attacked by. Oh, look, were there? Were there? That, I can't remember what the hell they were. Elders. No, no, they were like deep dwellers. Um, deep. deep Kobolds. No, it's not kobolds. Silver dragons. Shush, I would say Sahagan, but I don't know if Sahagan's a D&D &D entity. But they were basically deep. They were basically, um, actually, I feel like they were humans who were being transformed into, like, deep ones. But I'm not 100% sure. There it was. It was a tough fight. Um, I got... <laughs> I got crit by our Anja, got crit by their caster, and basically knocked over in one shot. <laughs> Thankfully, we have healers in the party, so uh, I got healed and brought, yeah, I think Brand healed me and was brought up. But yeah, it was a tough fight. It was a fun fight, and I like a good challenge. So it was, it was, it said basically it was mostly all a fight. Um, but there was chanting we could hear chanting a short distance away and when we eventually could look over there and the mist and the fog cleared it was the first mate uh aiden i believe was his name gilligan. His second names <laughs> yeah gilligan and he had captured the captain and sacrificed her right on the spot and we're going, oh, shit. Did I not <laughs> yeah, pay was attention good. to the show? You probably did. <laughs> I know. Did you? I mean, you were probably too busy writing on Twitch chat. So No, he was there. pretty absent from the chat. He actually came in after that. Oh, maybe so. then you didn't see that. But, yeah, basically the captain had been captured, and, and he sacrificed her. And <laughs> right after that, we all woke up. It was a dream. We, none of us were, it was April Fool's. So uh, I believe that was part of it right there. Um, and I said, and like 10 minutes into the session, I actually said, hey, it'd be really funny to prank our, you know, our viewers by having the party get TPK'd and then have it all be a dream in Anja's brain. Well, uh, the reality was it wasn't far off. It was all a dream, but we were all dreaming it. And when we woke up, none of us was in the position we went to, was in the same spot we went to bed in. Um, and we all had to make dread rolls uh, if we if we believed in, as players that this was actually for real, which I thought was a great way to, to I thought that was a pretty good mechanic right there. Uh, and I think I failed it. <laughs> but then after that, basically it was a lot of, uh, spending time uh, trying to re regain our sanity. Um, this said, uh, this is the Sandy Peterson system. So you basically you can accumulate dread, which is also like you know uh, accumulating insanity in um, regular Call of Cthulhu. So you get levels of it, and you can do things like if you you're away from it and you can rest and you can recenter and focus. 
you can you can get rid of levels of dread. So I believe everyone at this point has gotten rid of all the levels of dread because I have I think I was up to three after uh, after that nightmare and Bran 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 was like at three. He was at four at one point, but. Four is bad. Four means you start getting actual insanities if you fail the roll. Unfortunately, he didn't. But that's, I mean, that's pretty much the rundown of it. Uh, it was, as I said, it was a fun episode. I know I, by, by, I spilled the beans here that it was, the fight was not, you know, it was just a dream. But, um, but hey, it's true. If you like horror and that just fit right into it, uh, you know, you should definitely watch. It's, it has me horrified as a player. And that's great. It's absolutely, he's doing such a, Kyle's doing a great job. I don't want to, maybe he's not listening. So, you know, his ego won't grow 10 sizes. Oh, uh, you know, he's larger. listening. He's listening. Nah. So. If I'm having a blast playing and said, if you're not watching it, you should. And honestly, at this point, it's easy to catch up. You know, the episodes are only two hours long and we're only I'm sorry, at what? episode five. What? 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 Two, what? Two, two hours. hours. Two hours. And, what, hours. what game is that? Yeah. All right. Two, uh, two oh, hours. Oh, you're, you're talking about the calamity. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, talking yeah, about the calamity. Yeah. <laughs> it's about. Sorry, right, it's a little over two hours. It's about two hours twenty minutes. Wow, no, over. that's about it. No, it's about two hours twenty, I think. But we don't want to just cut it short. You know, it's a good enough story to just keep telling. In fact, I keep going another two hours. If I could. Not on this stream, you won't. Uh, next up is David with the episode 227, Calamity's fifth episode. David, tell us about that one. Yeah, that was a great episode. Was well, it we, now? We had one of, we were short, one of our regular cast members, but uh, our lovely and intrepid, intrepid producer filled in that spot last night uh that night so and it was great we came who up with a b missing? squad who were you missing we scott. were miss you miss scott oh uh, what was he doing off hunting or they, they celebrate knows? easter for a week yeah oh so. that's right he that's right he celebrates one day holidays for like you know well he's yeah, got to build a cross he's got to go out hunting somebody to sit on the cross <laughs> mm -hmm. he's gotta make the spear where he stabbed him. go ahead oh, david anyway <laughs> we were down one person so we came up with the idea for a b squad and basically from that we have like another campaign running within this campaign so it's pretty awesome magic magic so up oh, here we hey oh, it's joe is here oh my gosh you shot me Joe, I don't think he can see us yet. No, his audio is coming on. Oh, yeah, still connecting. <laughs> Shall I continue? It's fine. Keep, go. keep going. Keep hey, going. Joe. Keep going. Okay. Hey, hello, Joe. Hello. Hello. I was just giving the rundown on our Saturday night show. So, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the intros for him right after you finish, David. Sure. Sure. So anyway, we came up with the Beast Squad for the Calamity campaign. That episode is titled Trouble in Toad Town. <laughs> so basically, as we were in the Bronze Age with the Calamity campaign, imagine the Bronze Age in Southeast Asia. So yeah, it's pretty much that. <laughs> so Wow. Our technology was pretty bad in the village that we lived in. We we had no concept of sewers or anything like that. Well, you guys or plumbing. Did. So <laughs> so yeah, it it was a lot of fun. So it was uh, a mire, a swampy area, and we were making jokes saying that it was you know my home turf, Louisiana. But, you know things get wiped out. We just rebuild it. So anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh -oh. Episode is uh, Trouble in Toad Town. Basically, we parceled out some lands for some refugees. Uh, they turned out to be a lot more technically advanced than we are. And um, we were kind of suspect about that. And especially we got wind that they were building a temple or a shrine to another deity. We have the deity uh, Cheskin, who is more of an earthy type uh, nature-based deity. And uh, 
yeah, uh, the refugees, which are called the the Vax, is that correct, Frank? Yeah. Yep. Uh, scarred humanoids, uh, very, very advanced <laughs> as far as like uh, civilization goes, as far as like building architecture and things like that. So uh, anyway, so we were suspect of them. So we sent a team to go and check them out. The elders said, uh, basically our characters for tonight were Brother Cup, Brother Coda, and the Scout Crow. So <laughs> uh, they sent us to go check them out. <laughs> I'm just cracking up at Joe right now, trying to this camera. <laughs> I know. First he comes just, in, he's sideways. And now yeah, he's just, like, you know, you know, just, uh, just and now he's, a new stitch. Now he's got forehead. The top of your head. <laughs> Only forehead. Right. You know what? I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna nix this. And go back to the, the stupid laptop one. <laughs> yeah, because that's that we'll camera's that can the resolution on that other camera. That's was, nice. Was actually. But this is and good no, too. And so. No, it's it's all right. It's all right. Um <laughs> yeah, goodness gracious. Hashtag not professionals here, so, so don't worry. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I'll pick up right where we left off. Anyway, these three uh members from Toe Town get sent to to kind of spy on the refugees, kind of check things out. There are two clerics and the scout. Uh, we also run into their taskmaster, who is the warrior woman by the name of Krendar Sue, played by Carrie. And Carrie did an amazing job. So basically, uh, we were sent and sent out kind of to check out their ways. They offered to share some of their knowledge. We had a lot of skill checks for that. <laughs> whether or not we could uh, even comprehend like how to start a fire with wet wood and things like that how to build a wall Easy. because apparently we have no concept of walls wow. uh, so, so there were a couple of little interactions with the wildlife and then um yeah we get tasked with uh there was a skirmish towards uh the encampment and we get sent to investigate i think uh just out towards the jungles and um yeah not going to spoil too much but uh we get ambushed and we get our asses handed to us <laughs> and uh um, well, we split the party <laughs> we split the party which was great oh, no. and our Sue went running back to her part of the parcel land village uh and uh, yeah, after we got our asses kicked, we fight our way back. And I learned the hard way that with Frank, when he asks you to roll a percentage die, high is not good. <laughs> so so it's like, like, that out the I, I hard was happy way. with the answer. Yeah, so you're saying it's like an actual Cthulhu game. High is always bad. Yeah, it was bad. bad. So yeah, it turned out the high number was the amount of ca casualties in my home village. <laughs> And what was your number? Holy you fuck. 81%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of 50. 81% out of 50. So the well, only survivors are like us. <laughs> <laughs> my oh my God. And Lord. I am, and my character Crow <laughs> is barely alive. He's, he, he, he was killed, but he was like, you know, he was on his death saves and spared the die and got cast on him. So anyway, it's going to be up to our dungeon master in a dice roll to see whether or not Crow survives. Now, so, you, you, you left out one interesting point about calamity. And what was that, Frank? Dwarves are all Australian. <laughs> Brother like, Cup and right. Brother right. Coda. Very Australian. Australia, oh, yeah. Australia, we're, we're Australia. Australia. Obviously. So. Of course. I love you. Amen. Oh, yeah. Jesse was amazing. He kept the accent up all night. And oh, God. It was it's just terrific. great. Love Jesse was awesome. And Rob was funny as hell. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Rob killed me. So. so just a normal night in calamity. That's it. Everybody shot everybody else. That's yeah, awesome. pretty much. That's a normal night of murder hobo. I had to apologize for Carrie everybody. as I took the arrow out from her chest. Sorry. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah try to kill your runner. guest. Try to kill your guest. I see how it is. Uh, that is calamity, and that is also yep. up on the archive. Let's. Uh, Joe has arrived, so let's go ahead and give him a little bit of time to introduce himself to you. Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Joe, GM JoJo. I'm a professional dungeon master, <coughs> uh, occasional uh, uh, D&D Twitter person, uh, and I run D&D games as my full-time job at the moment. Um, it's keeping me working full-time, and I also am doing some work with the Dungeon Coach, who's a YouTube uh, D&D homebrew guy. Love his videos. Uh, and you will yeah. be joining us next week for the Professional DM Show, correct? Indeed. Yep. A lot of Should questions. Uh, so we've already got a lot of questions, folks, but if you have questions, uh, about being a professional DM, go ahead and send them to us and we'll get them over to them and hopefully you'll get your answer. I, I'm not lying, there are a shitload of questions already. Uh, and we only Great. do it for an hour. So we will try and zip through them as fast as possible. But if you have questions, hit us up. Uh, right now, we've got three. <coughs> uh, and then the moderator, possibly a fourth, we shall see. Uh, Joe, go ahead and tell them how they can get a hold of you. Uh, JoeTheDM.com is my website. You can also hit me up at uh, GMJoJo at, uh, on Twitter, uh, Instagram. Those all work. Um, those are the best ways to contact me. Uh, and, my website it, has those information as well. And it is J-O, correct? J-O, no E. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, folks, if you have any questions, you want to try and book him for a session, hit him up, check him out there. Uh, the last show that uh, we did was the Margu campaign, aka Tri-Generational on Sunday. It was 228 back on track. Uh, Jesus, when you have a family who plays D&D &D together, uh, shit goes sideways fast. These guys <laughs> were in the medieval uh, truck stop, aka Roadhouse. Uh, one of the party has been captured, a.k.a. Felix, uh, oh, no. fell hook, line, and sinker for the half-orcs charms and willingly let himself get tied up two sessions ago. He got lowered over the roof, made a huge racket. Nobody gave two shits, and he is on the back of a horse uh, at a very unusual speed with his captor, who has a wanted poster for all of them uh but she could only snag the one uh the rest of the group i don't know what can you say <laughs> they uh they were themselves they do have all of their mounts including all three giant chickens uh they are headed down the road to raglan tower Hopefully they will catch Felix in time because they are on a 10 day mission and this is going to be day 3 and the dilly dallying cannot will not go over well with the sisters of the moon uh that being said that is also on youtube in the archive check it out again uh the sunday guys all one family uh seniors been playing DD &D longer than i have uh and uh, the boys uh have uh, multiple uh years between them and their sons are playing now as well so if you ever want to see a 12 year old give you interesting facts that should never be on air. <laughs> Highly recommend that. Of that course. is the Margu campaign. Uh, this week we've got Cacophony on Thursday and a one shot on Saturday. Uh, no Margu game this Sunday. So still room available. If you want to play in the one shot on Saturday, hit us up. That brings us to the end of the recaps. And now let's go ahead and discuss the main topic, taxation. Taxation in the RPG scenario. Oh, what's it good for? Uh, Joe, you're here. I'm going to go ahead and let you talk. Uh, right. Tell us your thoughts on taxation and the RPG system. Well, uh, I mean, I haven't really used taxes for my players as of yet. Uh, yeah. To be fair, none of them have really settled down in a city or a town. So they <laughs> haven't had to deal with uh, uh, nobles taxing the uh, taxing the people or worrying about uh, housing prices and that sort of thing. Uh, I love it as a form of upkeep when your group has a, has a, a fortress or a, um, a, a settlement of their own that they're kind of looking after. The idea of them having to pool their resources and pour it out, dole it out to workers um, and that sort of thing. It's a great way to actually put, you know, the piles of gold that we give them to work. 
Um, that's my initial thoughts on on uh, on, on taxation um, because uh, uh, I mean, who likes taxes? Nobody. Nobody. I love paying taxes. You <laughs> fucking lie. Good answer, Joe. Uh, Carol, what do you think? Taxation uh, in the RPG world. All right, I'll go with this. The few times it's a, you know it's something that doesn't really appear in games that often, but when it does, usually it's to fuck over the players. Uh, at least it's the way it's always happened uh, in the games I've played where it has reared its ugly head. Uh, it's a plot point. It can be a great plot point. Um, you know, you think about it uh, in the real world, you know, taxation has been the cause of a number of wars and revolts. You know, so it's, it's a, it's, so to me, it can be a good plot point that can drive like that sort of plot, you know, uh, especially if you've got a, you got a leader who is overtaxing his population. That's a, probably a good target, especially if he's an evil leader that's overtaxing his uh, population. It's a good target for the PCs to go after. I mean, think of Robin Hood. What was he? What was he fighting against? Taxation. Yep. So it's it's a good tr yeah exactly. It's a great trope. I mean, and I've got come I've got stories, but I I will save those for later if we get to them. <laughs> Fair enough, David. What do you think? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, taxes, I mean, a couple of games that I play in, uh, taxes are paid monetarily and also through conscription, conscription, conscription. Service as life. in lieu of, of, of money. So that, Ooh. that's, that's a, that's a form of taxation also. Oh, I, that's I a. That would be so, a good plot point uh, too. I'm not sure how how like the next section uh, of our discussion or if we're going to discuss different forms or methods of taxation, but mm -hmm. that was part of it. Like for example, Waterdeep. Um, yeah, they'll if you're a magic user, yeah, you have to you have to serve the city in some way. So, but uh, yeah, I think taxes are. A great tool for a DM uh, to kind of help with uh, kind of reel things in with uh, your looters and your party and stuff like that. There's nothing like the NPC uh, monarch, you know, when you come into town with your loot and all that, go, thank you very much. And here's your finder's fee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, that, no, I can't mention that that's that other game. That's right. Uh, I, 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 so few of my groups would, they would be like, uh, no, we're not giving you any of this. <laughs> yeah, they'll give it to them point side. guards. <laughs> yeah, I was going to uh, say, they'll give them to them point side up. Mm. Yeah, we, the uh, we uh, now First. the Margu guys will complain that I don't need any tax representatives. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are dirt poor, but I, I've got to agree. Uh, the big use for me has always been Ah, crap. I gave them too much gold. They found a hoard. Uh, we need to trim that down. Certainly the Calamity guys don't have that issue, but you know, some of the groups I've had do that. Uh, and for me, your standard uh, tax assessor is a great tool for that. Uh, walking into town, nickel and dime in the party to death, uh, especially if they have to do something in town, makes for a perfect uh, example. Now, uh, Carol kind of stole the thunder, but that's okay. Plot points. Uh, Joe, give yeah. me a plot point where you could see, uh, and let's go ahead and ignore the Robin Hood trope because yeah, yeah, yeah. we all know that one. So I'm going to make you guys put your thinking caps on. Joe, give me some kind of a plot point that you think, okay, the tax assessor would be uh, a good point for this. Uh, the tax, sorry, the tax what? The tax guy is, is the Oh, center, I see. Center. I gotcha, I gotcha. Good, bad, yeah. or otherwise. All right. Um, well, the I'm going to say the uh, the taxes for the uh, we'll say it's a, a pretty large scale town have been pretty slack for decades. Uh, everyone has been living comfortably, but uh, for uh, I'm going to say about a month ago, the tax guy who's been the same guy for a dozen years uh, has suddenly. Uh, tripled the taxes uh, in the town and everyone is pretty up in arms about it. Uh, but 
They, the guards of the town are enforcing it. Uh, the town essentially is kind of put into a more militaristic uh, regime and people have to go do their jobs, work hard, and they are starting to, the people are starting to hemorrhage money. And uh, that would be probably when the adventurers would show up and be like, oh, this place looks a little beaten down. Good, very good. Carol, how about you? Give me a plug. Okay, one. so I'm going to go to one of those stories, <laughs> well, the, the main story, because this was hilarious. So I was playing, this is a, oh God, a number of years ago, and it, I forget which edition, it was not, it was not 5e, it was a number of years ago. And this was a very freeform game that basically the GM was making up on the fly. It was in one of the best games, if not the best game I've ever played in, because it was. The Sedellus was the best game you've ever played. I know you don't have. That's to kiss way my ass. up I got there. It. That's way up there. But that was not that one. There was no taxation because we didn't have a, we didn't have shit for money in that one either. But basically, um, the tax man, the, the taxes were to punish one of the PCs for well. Basically, there was one of the guys who wanted to play a samurai, and the GM eventually relented and let him do it. And so he, sh so basically, his clan had been wiped out, and uh, he was like the last one left. And we were in a town that was being run by the basically the people that wiped out his clan. Oh no! And they were having this big festival. And there was this huge prize at the end of the festival that nobody they wouldn't say what it was. And we end up winning the prize. Please so be the heads of his friends. Please be the heads of his friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Remember, taxes is the key here. So what they did, so basically he showed up. He won the prize. He showed up in his regalia of that clan that these people wiped out as a basically thumbing his nose at them. So they, you could tell they quickly changed the prize and they gave him a house, a mansion, an absolute mansion. Mimic. No, 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 Mimic no, mansion. No. no, you see, see, now here's where the taxes Monster come house. in. It being a mansion, the taxes you had to pay, it was like property taxes was Huh, extremely hefty. I couldn't tell you at this point how much it was, but it was like, like you know, 50,000 gold or something ridiculous a year. And if he didn't pay it, he'd be hauled off to jail. And they forced him to take the deed of the house. And it's like, oh, my God. And I think you had to pay them quarterly because we we did we can't, the game did not end too long before we... Fortunately, the game ended before we get to that point. But... It was said, there's a plot point. <laughs> it was basically, you know, said used to uh, screw over the character after he basically brought it on himself. He would have been perfect for this show. Nice. So, I mean, that was, an, that's just, <clears throat> that's an idea how you can burn your PCs if you really want to. Also, I was just thinking there's that other game, not the other game system I play. There's uh, Warhammer has a game system, has an RPG system. And in it, they have an, the, the Elves are, you know, kind of on the outs, and they have something called an ear tax that you can put on elves oh, because damn. of their ears. Good old yep. racism. Uh, yep. The Russian beard tax. <laughs> there you go. There's yeah. a couple. David, give me a plot point. Well, I was just going to bring it up. That's uh, what she was talking about, the ear tax. It's the like the tax. Russians had the beard tax. The beard <laughs> was a luxury. And depending oh. on the length of your beard, if it was over a certain size or whatever, you had to either shave it off or trim it or pay a tax. So, wow. so nice. yeah, that it is, cool. it's a historical fact. Um, I anyway, yeah, my um, my idea for taxation in, in a game, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, military oligarchy. Uh, Basically, you when I was talking about conscription, is your service uh, in the society's military is your form of taxes. And like if you're uh, merchants, of course, pay monetary taxes or whatever they can offer for the cause. 
uh, farmers in lieu of paying, uh, paying monetary taxes uh, pay a percentage of uh, crops and livestock to feed the armies and stuff like that. Now, if you can't serve, um, there are other ways for service. Um, those that refuse to serve, of course, they serve prison time, but they are actually put into service, building roads and things like that. So nice. that works. But, I got I got another plot point that I sure. just brewed up. Uh, yeah. Using this is not necessarily um, a way of hemorrhaging money away from the PCs, but if they come to a town or a village that uh, is trying to enforce taxes, but the people aren't listening, the governor or the head of that can hire the PCs to go through the town to get taxes from the people. Because then that is a whole bunch of little mini quests, little mini missions oh, yeah. for all the people in town who are be like, no, 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 like, please, 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 like, I need this five silver or like, I need, I can't give you this five gold right now or, the, you know, then that just, you know, then you get a whole bunch of fun morality, uh, morality stories. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's Damn great. it, Joe, you stole a uh, future plot point here. But that's oh. <laughs> that, that, that is a good answer. No, he uh, just thought really of it. He's taking yours, Joe. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, we're all, actually, we're all actually, we all know why. Answer. Yeah, we all know why I'm asking these questions because I've already told you that Saturday's one shot is urban. Gee, who'd have thought that probably tax collectors? Oh, it? crap. We're going to all be tax collectors on the one shot? Is that oh, what it God. is? I'm not going to tell you till Saturday night. So here is the next question. With the plot points in mind, does everybody pay taxes? Or is it like America where, oh, it's organized religion? No, you don't have to pay taxes. Joe, ball's in your court. Who pays? Who doesn't? And if they don't, why not? Um, I feel like it, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, depends on the setting. There's plenty of factors to consider. Uh, but I, I imagine for like a major city, um, I expect everyone would probably be paying taxes for housing, uh, especially if they're within the city walls and within the limits. I, I could imagine that the the farmers outside of the limits uh, of the of the walls they might be a little exempt from those taxes uh, because they're not worrying about the immediate housing situation or the guards who are within the walls. Um, I expect that if it's more of a corrupt um noble system the nobles probably don't pay that much taxes just like places that we know when the people <laughs> higher up it's fine i'm, I'm uh, praying for you joe <laughs> <laughs> nice. and for five dollars i'll pay real hard <laughs> oh my god uh, um and then i lo i love the idea actually of of adventurer tax though like uh like adventurer guilds um are like coming into a city you know your your loot is investigated you know your wares are looked at uh your collection of two thousand gold pieces that you have through the party being like okay thank you and we do have a five percent adventurers tax rate so we'll just take that hundred gold from each of you thank you so much um I, I like that idea a lot, and I just need to make a little note here. <laughs> nice. By the way, my little cousin just just texted me. He's watching the show, and he thinks what Joe is saying is very interesting, <laughs> especially the whole tax thing. So. Right, there you go. Start, start making your notes, Joe, because that's the future adventure. Yeah, yes, oh, yeah. Yes. He'll probably have some questions for you. <laughs> so, uh, next week. Right. Love it. Love it. Uh, Carol? What you got? You know, I, two, I had two things, actually, to, to build on that. I have actually played in a game where maybe not so much the town was collecting taxes, but if you needed to get in, basically, you try to get into a guild, and they would tax you themselves. But you would really? have to pay an entry fee, and it was not cheap to get into some of the guilds, you know, uh, in this town. But the thing I, the thing that I thought of is a, as a difference from what he's got is I'll go, I'll put more of a focus on the farms and stuff and the poorer people and, and this basically think of like a feudal system where you have the serfs and the farmers and yeah, they will, obviously they sell the crops and stuff or they have to donate or pay that as their tax to their lord. 
and the reward is the one that's taxed. So it sort of trickles up, I guess you could say. You know, you, you said the Lord is the one the tax collector goes to, but he's got a, is responsible for collecting from everybody underneath it. So everybody pays, but the Lord's bill is bigger, I guess you could say. Nice. And it depends. And if you wanted to go with the whole thing, a good Lord, a good, you know, Lord, good Lord, would um, he would, you know, be fair in his taxes. He basically just collect what he needed, maybe a little bit, because obviously he gets, he does have to make a profit. Um, and then pays the taxes that. But if you get somebody very unscrupulous, he could be, you know, really, you know, driving those people into the dirt, you know, sucking them dry and leaving them with almost nothing to live on. I think that comes with check boxes. <laughs> <laughs> David, what do you got? Well, staying with the oligarchy thing, the military one. Uh, yeah, it ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no senator's son. So those are probably the people that don't quit be... your day job. <laughs> ah. All right. Spoken word version. There you go. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, in a, in a military oligarchy, you would still have lawgivers and uh, representatives and things like that. You would have some kind of parliament or some kind of uh, Senate. Of course, there are, children their sons or whatever yeah they they would be exempt from service or something like that so you would think but you would think uh good answer now we've alluded to it earlier uh let's go ahead since that's one of the talking points that i wanted to cover uh what do you pay in taxes because if you're talking feudal not everybody has gold we've alluded to the fact that 10 percent of crops maybe time Joe, uh, in your mind, what do you think? Or is it a sliding uh, scale? I'm, I'm, uh, I, would, I would hope it would be a sliding scale because, uh, you know, obviously there are wealth gaps and differences that we see. Um, uh, and uh, I imagine if it's a monthly tax or a weekly tax, it would be uh, based on your income, what you're bringing in, what you're providing. So if you're a merchant, um, maybe what 10% of your sales, uh, uh, clearly I understand taxes very well. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I just, I like the idea of there being a tax for travelers coming in, uh, you know, based on their collections on their wares. I like the idea of, uh, it perhaps if you have like a, a lord who is understandable then perhaps you can uh, uh, levy or trade so you'd be like I don't have five gold of tax today but I've got uh, uh, like ten pounds of this very delicious tanned jerky hide <laughs> um, owlbear jerky hide <laughs> owlbear jerky hide is prime um and then, uh, yeah, I think I think for me, it would probably very much have to stay in line of uh, coins or uh, very tangible material goods. Very good. Carol? What uh, am I going to owe you? What are you going to owe me? I'll still stick with my... I think I said it, it really depends. I like the thought of a percentage of what you bring in. Although it depends. I mean, if the, I guess if the ta if there's a lot of people, the tax may not have, might not have, not have time to go over the books. So there may be a set amount for everybody, you yeah. know, that's not overly. It said if it's a good and you know decent leader, then it probably wouldn't be anything too tough to bear. If it's a friggin' desp, you know, somebody who, who who's greedy, then it said the town's probably bled dry and and there are people there that that can't pay. Um, but I, I, I also, but I do like the thought of using goods. I like the thought of, if you're a farmer, definitely your crops, some of your crops have got to be used as, as the Pigs, tax. man. You ba basically, basic, well, no, I'm thinking even like, you know, cr your crops like corn and wheat and such, you know, I, I also feel like it, it may be even in a responsible place. You have you basically taxing them, uh, to, to, to use it as a reserve in case a famine ever hits your kingdom. 
that would be the responsible thing to do. Uh, you know, have you know, have have us have a, have storerooms with, you know, with uh, so you can save it in case something bad happens. I like the thought of that. But that's a, that's if you have a good ruler. If you have the the, the opposite, they're going to be taking it for themselves and probably selling it to other kingdoms and such and keeping all the money and not keeping anything there because they're just a greedy, greedy sot. Good answer. Uh, David, I, I, I think I know what your answer is in the military. Yeah, well, I'm leaving him to yeah, the but, uh, Let's think uh, in some other terms. Uh, uh, let's say, like, for example, uh, taxes on imported goods like tariffs and stuff like that. Uh, a road tax. Uh, if you want to use the roads in the kingdom and stuff like that at certain points, I mean, you'll have to pay a tax. You know, the king's road. That's true. A toll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Um, also, in a perfect society, the lower the the lower castes would pay the least in taxes, and the wealthy merchants and nobility would pay the highest. You're a communist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like what? What is this? Or no, okay. socialist. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Larry Kudlow. But, you're you're uh, no he's capitalist, this. pig. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, you know, but like churches, churches are not exempt. Uh, they have to provide mm, services. Going to hell. <laughs> no, they have to provide services like health care. Ooh, Ooh nice. yeah, taxing yeah. churches would be the way to finance national health care. So you nice. know, Boom. you know, it's funny because I was I was thinking that about um, Fulton, like the aftermath of the war. It's like the who would be who would be you know setting up the triages to treat all the wounded men and such. It'd be the churches. So that absolutely makes so that makes so much sense. Well said, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you know, the funny thing is that's where she probably is for like a month after that because she was so wrecked. She to probably bring, was at a church to bring Joe up to speed. The end Thank of the you. campaign. Yes. Carol's character sustained the loss of a limb <laughs> so a leg. Uh, my character lost a leg but basically all right well that's, that's, the, name that's the name before. eileen so. yeah well it's it's not just that it's the fact that she basically was in the center of a exploding um artifact so you know yeah. i'm not crying i don't know what the hell you're doing i think that's it was great it's completely yeah, it's insensitive that's, that's, that's that a we're wicked. doing but you know, it's no, it, it is totally it's insane, but it's but it's totally flipping awesome uh, as a player. I, the only yeah. thing is that I'm sad because we're not playing it anymore. But we will. He says we're going to do one shot, so we'll I guess I'll play. Great. I'm going to get to play a one, basically a character who lost a leg, and I really want to do in the that. battle in the battle chair. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you're gonna use the combat gotta, wheelchair. We gotta get it. We gotta go yes. get it though. Yes. I still, I oh, still so want sweet. Kyle so to. I want Kyle, basically Kyle's created this library and I want them to actually go oh, there. Kyle to gets get the, the credit for it. Oh yeah, oh, Kyle no, gets no, no, the credit no, no, for the library. Okay, the DM didn't do that shit hey, at all. No, no, <laughs> Frank, this has nothing to do, this is a this is a future thing that he says he'd like to run. This has nothing to do with, it's it. This is, you You have, you have plots, you, I know you want Well, Frank run, will so. be having a little discussion with Kyle then. <laughs> It's been mentioned more than once. I don't know how he missed that. <laughs> that, that is true. Uh, one, one thing I'll just add real quickly, and it's not a spoiler alert for Saturday, but nobody mentioned, uh, hey, you're going to have to surrender your kid. Oh. <laughs> that would be the military uh, conscription. That oh, they're, they're going into the military. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you trafficking? Are you this could be something really or... dark. You know, the Maharaja doesn't get 400 concubines by accident. What I, if I, I'm I just saying. Wait, what wait, if wait, a coven wait, 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 whoa, whoa, was the whoa, government? Wait. A coven. Were you the oh. one against pedophilia here, mister? I, I didn't say anything about pedophilia. Thanks hell, for bringing bro? your uh, dark well, corners into this show. What do you think concubines means there? Those are adults. Those are adults, Carol. Yeah, yeah, we're, not, we're talking apples and talk, oranges here. God. You started off by talking about children. Yes, and then, and then I moved said, to another topic. No, you uh, did. You folks at home, sex trafficking <laughs> is wrong. Is wrong. Okay. Oh, it, it is. Workers, okay. Sex trafficking, wrong. Uh, <clears throat> we're starting to run low on time. So here is oh, the yeah. kicker, of course. 
Uh, Joe? Yes. Screw you. I'm not going to pay my taxes. What happens to me? Well, I mean, <laughs> it'll probably, dependent on what you have, it will mm-hmm. probably be taken. Dependent on the form of collection, you'll probably go to jail. Um, if you're an adventuring group that is refusing to pay your uh, adventuring tax, then you will either, you know, be forcibly uh, removed from the city or not permitted to enter. Um, uh, and if you, you know, put up a fight, well, then, you know, they'll probably have to stomp you down. Uh, so I, I am, if, if there are taxes involved and you don't pay the taxes, uh, consequences definitely happen. Uh, I like the idea of jail time and the idea of your <laughs> wares being removed for the amount that, you know, you are taxed with a little bit of interest for inconvenience sake. No, oh, you've got you got to tack on the charges. Uh, Carol, same question. Screw that's, you, I'm not paying your taxes. That's that's pretty much actually that, that's about what I can think of is jail time. I mean, you know, how else would you punish someone, you know, especially if you're a <laughs> join us Saturday night when we find that answer out. Ooh, I'm not unscrewed. I, 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 I want to play, man. I want to play. Well, yeah, I mean, it said it depends. It depends on the type of leader you're playing. Once again, a lot of yep. this depends on the type of leader you're playing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You could, you could go, go that route. You could torture people. Um, of course, to me, <laughs> do. But, but here's the but here's the thing. Yeah, you can torture people if you want, but you can't get. I mean, if they don't have the money, you can yeah. torture them all you want. What's the? But still, you still not going to have the money. You know, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, yeah, you put the fear up. But if they don't have the money to begin with, usually, if we're talking about an evil leader that's willing to go to that, he's probably taxed them nearly to death, anyways. So. Yeah. Um, you know, his people are just living in fear, but it's like, you know, and if they don't don't have any money, how how are they going to pay? Uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm looking at more from the same viewpoint he did, where, yeah, jail, like where you're basically sassing me, saying I ain't going to pay. That's different. Uh, that that means yeah, haul your ass to jail and take and sell off all your possessions. Uh, you know, seize your house. In fact, to my farmers, seize their crops. You know, you could, you absolutely can. You, that, I believe that's been done in history for realsies too. Forever, yeah. David. Yeah. Screw you. No taxes. What are you gonna do? To yeah, me? see, that's the thing. It's screw you. No taxes. Not well, now, ca- now, Carol, I, I've got something for you here in just a minute. <laughs> but first, we're gonna hear from David. Okay, I'm going to think out of the box here. Okay, instead of the ways that they've thought, uh, let's say a little mystical or arcane or necromantic ways of playing. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, that's where I was going. Uh, Hexes, curses, hoxes, plays. Kill them and bring them back. (laughs) Yes. But, that's so workers. dark. But yeah, I love the idea of, the total I love the idea of curses. Thing. That's great. Curses. I mean, very cool. can I mean, applied. I guess if they are, you know, fuck you, I'm not paying you. Then and yeah, it might be fun to kill them, kill them, yeah. and bring them back and. and- Kill them and bring them back. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm going with the more oh, the hexes shit. of the curses. Yeah, you know, yeah. If you can't pay, then you're gonna suffer in, until you do. <laughs> you know, you, you put contagion. That's a great. On them. That's exactly. a great idea. Exactly. Yeah, They're farmers. Like they don't want to pay. Blight. You know, oh. Salt yeah. the salt the earth. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah. Oh. If I, yeah, but if I was a greedy asshole, I'd rather take their crops and sell them myself. <laughs> and then maybe you no, know, I'd rather take all the crops, all the crops, sell it myself and keep pocket the money, you know. That's the problem. All these other ways, great, but then you're kind of cutting off your you could potentially be cutting off your own nose to spite your face. Yeah. yeah. I mean as an as an evil despot, I always need human torches. So <laughs> Oh my god, that is the freaking worst. Yeah, Joe, we did, did that, that in Fulton. <laughs> We, we filled their bellies torches. with oil and yes. stuck rope down their throat and made and them human torches. Them on it, fire. Was, it was astonishing. 
That was yeah. one of the most horrific. I've been playing for a really long time, and that was one of the most horrific scenes I have ever seen in a I am DVD shook. game. I am I am shook it. <laughs> I'm I am shook it. I should have wide them. <laughs> nice. uh, I went wow. upstairs. I went upstairs after wow. that session. And I told my husband, and he was like, "What?" I mean, he and he runs horror games. He runs horror, and he was like, <laughs> "No, that's fun. great." I mean, yeah, I mean, but there's a there's a there's a huge difference between supernatural horror and then like, yeah, that. You that really do so that shit. <laughs> that was <laughs> like the most gonna... disturbing thing. Well, Romans yes. did that in the Colosseum. They cover cover the people in tar, strap them to a pillar, and light them. I proceeded. I don't want to do that. I just want to pour it down into their gullet. We'll light it. Yeah, because no, then they can glow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if you can real. I don't even know if that works. A little mid light. You just gotta shave down. Just shave down the skin a bit. You know, then yeah. it gets oh, a little oh, more transparent. Oh God! Ooh, look, pretty lights. Uh, <laughs> final. Good God. <laughs> final thoughts on taxation. Give me a one good thought on taxation, Jeff. Tax the rich. <laughs> Eat the rich. Sure, Carol. <laughs> Are we talking about tag taxation sucks okay <laughs> but taxation in a game can be an excellent plot it's i think it's a rather underutilized but a really good uh tune in saturday <laughs> i know yeah tune in saturday i guess i now i want to play now you have to make sure i play in this game on saturday because i really don't want to play <laughs> uh david point. revolution so uh basically uh, no, people have got to get something for their money. If services are not being rendered, social services, then boom, you have a revolution on your hands. So, Your heart is bleeding so much, you need a tourniquet around your neck. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, nice. It's humanity. <laughs> Wow. Uh, no, I, I, I Humanity has no place in D&D. &D. No, no, I was thinking Bastille. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I couldn't agree more. Break Oops. out the guillotine. That's right. Uh, final thoughts on anything you want to do. Joe, including uh, pitch yourself again. <laughs> uh, good. No, I don't know. Um, I'm, I actually am stoked about the idea of, uh, of running an adventurer's tax for people coming into big cities. Um, especially if there's established uh, adventuring guilds already in those cities, it can just be like, are you registered with the guild? And they're like, no. Ah, well, 10% adventuring tax then. Let's see what you got. I think that was the deal too. I think it was something along the line, you had to join the adventurers guild. Or you had to join yeah. one of the connected guilds to being adventurers because there was like a wizard's one and there is the totally. church and everything. Yeah, yeah. second E, tithing. Works, it, it does mm -hmm. work. It's a really cool plot point. Carol, final thought? Uh, I guess that was part of it, but um, no, I, I already have my other final thought. I guess you could say, well, I don't know, follow me on Muses underscore touch for video painting goodness and gaming chat. <laughs> Joe, one more time on your website, please. Yeah. Uh, JoeTheDM.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at G underscore M underscore JoJo. Uh, GM JoJo is my uh, moniker, Game Master JoJo, which I'm changing over from Joe the DM because I do more than just Dungeons and Dragons now. Cool. And David, final thoughts. I'm really liking the idea of a monarchy of witches. I'm really digging that idea. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, magic is heavily controlled and yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Are they That's getting your children? Are they are, are they Getting hey, what's children. up with you and children, Carol? Carol? Well, I brought, <laughs> so well, wait, 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 wait. If you play Curse of Strad, you probably know what I'd be talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dream pastries. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The dream pastries and the witches. Yep. Yep. So, yep. but we'll tell them later. No, no. I'm just digging that idea. So, but right. folks, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, D and Devious. Uh, also, uh, yeah. I'm always the here. So you can it's always find here me. until he's not. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> so this has been uh, Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls, our talk show, our stab at a talk show. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our crap, uh, go ahead. The link's down there somewhere. Uh, big shout out to uh, Pirate Dog Dice for custom-made dice. And, of course, oddfishgames.com for their beloved adventure sense. I can huff them because I don't have putrid sewers, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> and most importantly, if you want to be on the talk show or you want to be on the one shot this Saturday, M Hobo Inc., Twitter, Gmail, hit us up. We will get you on there next week. Professional DMs, including Joe. Uh, so if you've got questions, we have an extensive list already, but go ahead and send in your questions. I may have to do a lottery system. Uh, join us next Tuesday uh, as the pros tell us what it's like to have our dream jobs. Uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., don't forget to watch us Thursday on Cacophony as they, I uh, believe, found a castle in the clouds. Oh, uh, boy. We'll see how that works out for them. Uh, folks, have a great weekend. We will see you soon. Everybody do the dating game. Kiss and wave. Mm -hmm. Brayton, no D&D, &D, unless you finish.